Good morning. My name is Jan Mould. I'm one of the assistant directors for competitive events for Host of Future Health Professionals. And I know that all of our standards probably cover infection control in all of our courses. So I wanted to share this um, PowerPoint with you with some of the resources that I've used in the past in my classroom. I think it'll really work well with an online learning. The bell ringer that I start with, uh, sometimes I do this before we get started with the unit. Sometimes I do it after we've been doing the unit for a while. Obviously, when we've been doing the unit for a while, um, I've gotten some pretty lengthy responses of how students would respond. But the bell ringer is you enter your science classroom and are given instructions to use a lancet to break skin on your finger for small blood sample. You are then directed to pass the lancet to the person behind you for their use. There are about 25 people in your classroom and two lancets. So the question for the students is, how would you respond? And again, the, it's a little bit of difference depending on when you introduce this particular bell ringer. But what the students find really interesting is that this is an actual case. And so then I share this with them. It happened in... Um, a school where a teacher actually did that, had the students share the Lancet. There were about 1,100 students in that school. Um, there were juniors and seniors, and they said it was minimal risk, but they did have to have baseline HIV and H hepatitis B and C testing. Um, so again, just to kind of bring them to that this is real world, and that, um, you know, the more educated you are, the better off you're going to be. There is a wonderful website that I've used with my students called Partnering to Heal. And when you go to that website, it's all free. You basically can go through and it gives you different people that are on the team. And this in is the introduction. Somewhere in America. A case of Whitney Ross. What went wrong? In a way, I think we all wish that the result of her case had been related to her appendicitis. But it wasn't. So what went wrong? As you go through this website, what you're going to find is training for your students to do that is very easy for them to follow. So they just click here. In a hospital boardroom starts with somewhere in America. And they can go all the way through it. One of the things I did is I came up with an assignment so that they could actually do this on their own independently, allowing them to watch the links. So here are the specific instructions, and then I have things they're supposed to do in there, like identify the four types and write a brief summary defining the infections, the four types of healthcare associated infections. The Kelly videos, the Dina videos are the ones I used, again, Look at that website. I think you're going to find a lot of information that will meet your needs in a lot of different classes. One of the things I do is I do spend quite a bit of time on healthcare associated infections and the CDC has a great website that includes things like what types they are, how you prevent them, the laboratory resources. So just cdc.gov backslash HAI backslash will take you to this website. I have some questions that I've written uh, for that article is what does the author want us to know about healthcare associated infection? What does the author include as intangible cost of HIAs? What does the author infer regarding the cost of HIAs in relation to other medical conditions? So some higher level thinking for the students to go through as they're doing that. One of the things that um, I really like is using 
some of the HOSA competitive events in my classroom. And the reason was the guidelines are there, the information's there. So you can go to the HOSA.org website, go to competition, and you'll see the guidelines. So what I do is have them go to the emergency preparedness and go to epidemiology. When you get there, it's going to talk a little bit about the purpose and a description of the event, and then it gives the websites that are actually used by HOSA to do the test plan. So all your information is included right there. The assignment that I have them do is go to that first website that's listed and click on that, and then I've also written questions for them to come up with to define epidemiology in their own words. Epidemiology is concerned with, and that should be two factors instead of toe factors in health events and population. Uh, de define determinant in your own words. Again, just coming up with questions that are related to uh, make sure that the students are getting the information that I want them to get as they use that website. This is another website that I just love. It's a little dated, but it is on history. Uh, the first one is on Jon Snow. And this is pbslearningmedia.org. In 19th century London, nothing brought more fear or panic than the yellow flag signaling a cholera epidemic. And the outbreak that hit in 1854 was one of the worst. John Snow, a London physician, knows he can't help the dying. But he is determined to help the living by figuring out how victims catch cholera in the first place. Today we know that cholera is caused by a germ, a bacteria in this case that is spread in human waste. But back then, the prevailing theory held that cholera was carried in a cloud of bad air called a miasma. Miasma. It can't be miasma. So it goes through the story of Jon Snow, and I've written some questions that go along with that. Uh, it basically starts with what is public health and what does that mean? And then an additional video that I used from that site has to do with a mysterious illness in New York City. And this is a series of videos. Tracy McNamara had the job of her dreams. As lead pathologist at the Bronx Zoo, she could oversee the health and safety of hundreds of rare and endangered species. But little did she know she would soon become embroiled in a mystery that would bring New York City to the brink of panic. It all started with the crows. Crows were falling from the skies in large numbers. I mean, literally, these things were taking nosedives into the exhibits. These things were just dropping like stones. So for that section of the crows, again, why were they dying? What condition was causing patients to be admitted to the hospital? What did the investigators know and not know? And where did the investigation begin? What questions did they ask? What did they suspect? And how'd they come up with that idea? And what was what did they do to test their hypothesis? So looking at that field of epidemiology by using these websites, they actually see how they do it. Uh, there is a second video. Desperate to find out what was killing her birds, McNamara and her team examined brain tissue from the victims. So it follows along from the first video. When I looked at that first slide, it took my breath away. It was the worst encephalitis I'd seen in 18 years as a comparative pathologist. 
Encephalitis is an inflammation of the brain, a condition similar to the one affecting the flushing patients. So it goes on to, so again, what evidence, what convinced the CDC to reconsider its diagnosis? So using these links and these really nice websites, it really is easy to prepare a lesson that students could do on their own at home and then send in or submit to you their responses. And it also gives them a lot of information about our epidemiology event for comp competition at hosts of future health professionals. You'll notice that um, if you're looking at our CPR guidelines or CERT guidelines, that infection control is written in there with donning your PPE. Um, most of the professionals that have talked with us about guidelines say that it's something that uh, needs to be incorporated in a variety of, of our events, and we've done just that. Uh, we all know how important it is now more than ever. So again, I appreciate your time. Um, we will have things available for you, such as the questions so that, and the PowerPoint that you can use it in your classroom. Thank you for your attention.